Hello and welcome to this episode of Danny's Tips. Today I'll be showing you what the best keyboard and mouse is for Photoshop or other productivity and creative work. People tend to use the free keyboard and mouse that their computer came with, but those are usually not the best. For a software like Photoshop where you need precise mouse movements, a high quality mouse is a must have, especially if you're working on a high res display. More on that later. Photoshop also has a lot of tools and commands, so a keyboard with extra macro keys will improve your workflow significantly. In this video, you'll learn how to pick the best keyboard and mouse to improve your productivity. Now just to be clear, this video isn't about buying peripherals that will make you look like a professional. The stuff I'm going to recommend to you is based on how practical they are, not how professional they look. Most of the products are designed for gamers, but don't be fooled into thinking that gaming products aren't good enough for professional work. Manufacturers market their products for gamers simply because there are way more gamers than photographers and digital artists. Gaming keyboards and mouse are some of the best performing and well-built products you can buy, and they make using Photoshop so much better. So don't worry if the products make you look like a gamer. It's all about being more productive. Let's start off by talking about your keyboard. A good keyboard isn't 100% necessary for Photoshop. Most of the features are for your own comfort and personal preference. But there are some practical features that make them a good investment. One of the biggest features that might make you more money are macro keys. These are extra keys on your keyboard that you can program to any hotkey, keystroke combinations, and more. It's incredibly useful. Your productivity will improve so much once you start using it. If you want to add a hotkey in Photoshop, you can do it by going to Edit, Keyboard Shortcuts. But you're going to have a tough time finding a hotkey that's not already taken. A better solution is to use macros. For example, I have a macro for converting a layer into a smart object. What this macro does is it presses the combinations ALT-L-S-S, which basically loads a command from the menu. On Max, it's more complicated but it's still possible. I don't use Max anymore but from what I remember, you had to press something like Command F2 and then use the arrow keys on your keyboard to navigate around the menus. It sounds like a lot of keystrokes, but you can record your macros with no delays and it'll play so fast that it feels like you're pressing a hotkey. I use macros all the time, and I have it set so that the macro keys will change depending on which software I'm currently using. Time is money. If you're not using macros yet, I highly recommend you try it out. Once you get into the habit of using it and you build your own profiles, you'll get things done so much faster. Once you start using macros, you're going to run into another problem. When you have so many macros set, it's hard to remember which one does what. And this is where RGB lighting comes in. Look for keyboards that let you set the colors for every individual key like the Corsair K95 keyboard. Some keyboards will say that they have RGB lighting, but they only let you have one color for your entire keyboard or for a couple zones in your keyboard and not the individual keys. Make sure that the keyboard you're buying has per key RGB lighting. I'm currently using a Corsair K95 keyboard. It has 18 macro keys and I use all of it. In fact, it's not enough for me, so I have a second macro pad, the Logitech G13. I recommend this if you need more macro keys or if you're using a laptop and don't want to carry around a gigantic keyboard. There are other options like this crazy cherry keyboard with more keys than you ever need. But I don't recommend this because the software is quite outdated and it's not as flexible as the other software from other manufacturers. So which keyboard do I recommend? Here are my top 5 recommendations. The Razer Orb Weaver is a macro pad with 20 keys in the main area and additional keys around it. It has per key RGB lighting, great build quality, and software that lets you set customizable macros with unlimited profiles. I recommend this if you are using a laptop or if you need a lot of macro keys. If you don't need the per key RGB lighting, the Logitech G13 is a better choice. It's price lower and has some of its own unique benefits. It gives you 22 macro keys, 3 dedicated profile switching buttons, and a dedicated on-the-fly macro recording button. It doesn't have per key RGB lighting like the Razer or Reaver Chroma, but it does have an LCD which is useful for displaying your CPU and RAM usage. If you use a lot of Photoshop actions, the SteelSeries Apex 350 is a great keyboard that's not too expensive. It has plenty of macro keys, but what I like most about it are the macro keys above the F1 to 12 buttons. They're great for mapping your favorite Photoshop actions. The cons for this keyboard is that the keys aren't mechanical and you can only set the colors based on a couple zones, not the individual keys. The Logitech G910 is a great mechanical keyboard with per key RGB lighting. 
It has 9 macro keys, which isn't many but they're located on the left and top side which is useful if you like to have two sets of macro keys. For example, on the top macro keys, you can use that to store your favorite Photoshop actions. And the sides, you can use that for common Photoshop commands like rearranging your layers. My top recommendation is also the keyboard that I'm currently using. The Corsair K95 RGB it has a whopping 18 macro keys, a dedicated on-the-fly macro recording button, three dedicated profile switching buttons, and per-key RGB lighting. It also has the best build quality I've ever seen in a keyboard and the software is very very customizable. Anything you can think of, you can probably do in the Corsair software. It's not as user friendly as other software like Logitech, but if you can use Photoshop, then you'll have no problems learning how to use the Corsair software. The only downside is that once in a while, the macros will just stop working. But once you open the Corsair software, it'll fix itself immediately. Aside from the software issues, this is the best keyboard you can get for Photoshop. Now let's talk about something more important, your mouse. I see people doing professional work that requires precise movements and they're using a cheap mouse, usually the free mouse that comes with the computer. A good mouse makes a huge difference, especially if you're working on a high res display. Have you ever switched to a new mouse and found that you're not used to it? You can tweak the DPI settings all you want, but it never feels like your old mouse. It's probably because of the sensor position. On this G700 mouse, the sensor is located near the front of the mouse while on this Corsair Scimitar mouse, it's located at the center. Look at the bottom of your mouse and notice where the sensor is positioned. I realized that this sensor position changes the way that I hold the mouse. On the G700S, my palm would be resting on the mouse which makes it very comfortable to use. But on my Corsair mouse, I tend to hold it like a claw because I'm used to holding my mouse so that the fingers are positioned near the sensor. If you want something that feels like your old mouse, Try to find a mouse where the sensor position is roughly the same as your old one. The main reason for getting a gaming mouse is the adjustable DPI setting and improved polling rate. DPI stands for dots per inch and it's basically a measurement of how sensitive your mouse is. A higher DPI setting will move your cursors more pixels per inch. The quick gist is that all gaming mouse have more DPI than you need even on a 4K display. Normal non-gaming mouse however will typically have a fixed DPI between 800 and 1200, which is sufficient for low res display. But if you have a 4K display, you should really be getting a gaming mouse with at least 2000 DPI. Anything over 6000 DPI is excessive. There's no harm in getting a mouse with a very high DPI setting, but just make sure that you're not specifically spending money for that extra feature. On my 40 inch 4K monitor, I have my mouse set to 2000 DPI which will move it roughly halfway across the screen for every 1 inch of movement. If you're used to using a low DPI, it'll take some time to adapt to higher DPI settings and this is where the DPI buttons on your mouse will come in handy. Most gaming mouse will have buttons for you to increase or decrease the DPI. So if you need more precision, you can simply press the button to lower the DPI and make your mouse slower. If you want your mouse to move faster, you can press the button to increase the DPI. It's a very handy feature. Finally, polling rate is the other reason to buy a gaming mouse. Polling rate is a measurement of how often your mouse reports its position to your computer. A higher polling rate means that your mouse is more responsive. Normal non-gaming mouse will have a polling rate of 125Hz, which means it reports its position to your computer 125 times a second or every 8 milliseconds. Gaming mouse will typically have higher polling rates such as 250Hz, 500Hz, and 1000Hz. You will notice a difference going from a non-gaming mouse with a polling rate of 125Hz to a gaming mouse of 500Hz. The difference between 500 and 1000Hz however is not very noticeable. Just like how you can buy a keyboard with macro buttons, you can buy a mouse with macro buttons too. It's a great way to improve your productivity. The benefit to macro buttons on your mouse compared to a keyboard is that you don't need to let go of your mouse so often. I have my mouse set to switch tabs, zoom in and out, close a document, and scroll up and down a panel. In Photoshop, for some reason the page up, down, home and end keys don't work in the panels. Using the scroll wheel is very slow. So what I did was I made a macro that lets me scroll faster like this. And even faster like this. By the way, don't forget to use a mouse pad. I used to use the mouse on the bare surface of my desk, but I've been using a mouse pad for a couple months now and it makes a huge difference. It's a lot smoother and it also extends the life of the mouse feet. It's hard to get a gaming mouse that isn't good. Any gaming mouse will be a huge improvement over a non-gaming mouse. 
But here are my top picks. The Corsair Scimitar RGB is the mouse that I'm currently using. It's a wired mouse with 12 macro keys on the side and two D-pad buttons on the top. The position of the side buttons can be adjusted and I have mine set to very front. It's a very comfortable mouse and just like with the Corsair keyboard, the build quality is awesome. The downside is that the scroll wheel doesn't tilt, so you can't scroll horizontally. If you like the Corsair mouse but wish it was wireless, the Razer Nagai Epic Chroma is a great alternative. The side buttons are fixed, so you can't adjust the position of it, but it does have a tilt scroll wheel and it comes with a charging base. It's a great mouse but it's also quite pricey at 130 US dollars. The Logitech G600 is a wired mouse and just like the previous two mouse, it has 12 macro buttons on the side and two DPI buttons on the top. But unlike the two, it has a third mouse button which is very cool. You can set this button so that if you hold onto it, it will lower the DPI and give you slower mouse movements. I personally haven't gotten used to that and I find that using the DPI buttons is easier. But if you can get used to it or you have ways of making use of the third mouse button, then this is a great choice. The best thing I like about this mouse is that the side buttons have an angle to them which makes it very easy to feel which button you're pressing. Coming in second place is the Logitech G900. It is the best wireless mouse you can get. It's super lightweight, has the most advanced optical sensor, the fastest response time for a wireless mouse, and it even has a built-in 32-bit ARM Cortex processor to power all of this. Essentially, it's the best mouse you can get, but the reason why this doesn't win the first place is because it's overkill for photography work, and for 150 US dollars, it's not cheap. I recommend this mouse if you're left-handed, or if you just want the best mouse that you can get and money is not a concern. However, keep in mind that this doesn't have as many macro buttons as the previous three mouse we mentioned. The number one mouse is the Logitech G700S. I've been using this mouse for a long time, and although it doesn't have as many buttons as the first three that I mentioned, it has them positioned in better places. One of the issues with having so many buttons crammed onto the side is that it's easy to press the wrong one. This mouse has four buttons on the side, three on the left mouse button, and one in the center. The other benefit is that this is an incredibly comfortable mouse. I've used this mouse for over five years and I love it. The only reason why I switched away from this mouse is for productivity reasons. I simply needed a mouse with more buttons. The downside with this mouse is that it's not very durable. I went through three replacements, twice because the scroll wheel broke and once because the left mouse button broke. However, Logitech's customer support was awesome and they sent me replacements for free. And you can see that on mine it's already showing signs of wear and tear. It's still the most comfortable mouse. It's also wireless, low price, and has a lot of buttons. And that's why the Logitech G700S is the best mouse for Photoshop. Hey, thanks for watching this video. You can find the product links in the video description below. Now, before you commit to buying anything, you should go on YouTube and search for a product review. You should know the pros and cons of what you're buying and all of the features, especially for a product that you're going to be using for years and years and years. Anyways, uh, thanks again for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. Like this video if you like it and I'll see you again next week.